Hi, I'm Nathan Ritter from CardioGage.com. I'm a cardiologist in New York. This video is about fish oil and some important recent studies. So over the past 20 years, fish oil has been a controversial topic in cardiology, and the pendulum swung back and forth on in terms of whether we should recommend it or not recommend it, and, uh, but things are starting to clear up some. So two recent trials uh, of EPA-only fish oil have uh, shown some pretty compelling results. And really, at this point, I'm starting to consider it as a legitimate treatment for people with vascular disease. So let's get right into it. The first study we're gonna look at here is the Evaporate trial. And that came out in August, 2020. So they used Vasepa, which is a prescription brand for EPA-only fish oil. Um, they used that plus a statin and they tested that versus um, placebo plus a statin. And they used it in people who had coronary artery disease. So these people had a CT scan of the heart before the trial, and then they had another one at 18 months to compare how much blockage there was um, visible on the scan. So it was a measure of the degree of plaque, the plaque volume, and remarkably, the reason we're talking about this is because Vesepa plus a statin decreased the plaque volume by a lot. And it, it turned out that soft plaque, which is low attenuation plaque here, decreased by 17%. And then a more important number from my point of view, um, which you can see on this amazing graph here, is over here, the total plaque. The total plaque that they uh, measured, the total volume in the Vesepa group decreased by um, 9%. So it shrank plaque a lot. And in the uh, group that got statin plus placebo, it, um, it increased 11%. So this is a really big difference. And um, really this minus 9% here, that's a lot of plaque um, to go away over a period of two years, or excuse me, a year and a half, which was the interval that they measured that at. So that's really encouraging because um, there isn't a lot of stuff out there that decreases plaque. Possibly having a vegan diet can shrink plaque. Um, you wonder if a keto diet could shrink plaque. I don't believe that's been shown in any studies. And um, you can check out my resuvastatin versus atorvastatin smackdown video where I talk about how those medications shrink plaque. Um, but generally, they would only shrink it by like a couple percent. So this minus 9% is a lot more than a statin alone would accomplish. And check out this um, pretty cool pic here from the study. This top image is a cross-section of, of an artery um, before the trial started, and this white part is the lumen. So that's the cross-section where the of the blood vessel where the blood would flow through it. And then, and then down here, it's the same area in, in the blood vessel. It's the same portion. They did a cross-section after the treatment, and the area of the blood vessels a lot greater. It's like, well, you'd want it to be bigger, right, than, than it was, and it's bigger here than it is here. And then the green and red stuff is the amount of plaque, and obviously there's a lot less plaque um, in this location here as compared to, you know, here, um, which was before the study. So the conclusions I take away from this, um, this study were that EPA-only fish oil as icosapent ethyl, which is a slightly processed fish oil, um, in a dose of two grams twice a day, combined with a statin, shrinks plaque, minus 9% over 18 months. And then um, I you know, consider this um, important that people with coronary artery disease and elevated triglycerides could benefit from this intervention. Something that's uh, really interesting to me is that after treatment, the triglyceride numbers were the same in the people who had the placebo uh, or the EPA fish oil. It's like the EPA is supposed to decrease triglycerides, um, but it turns out in the study it didn't, which is strange. Um, it does make you wonder a little bit about the study. But anyway, um, another thing it makes me wonder is, well, maybe EPA would work for people with normal triglycerides if the triglycerides didn't go down and the plaque shrank. The next trial I'm going to talk about is the REDUCA trial. And they use the same stuff, icosapent ethyl, so Vasepa, two grams twice a day. They had people who had a prior dose, diagnosis of coronary artery disease, over 8,000 of them, and they followed these people for five years. So the people who got the medication, 
um, had a 17% of stroke heart attack, stenting, that type of thing, versus the people who got the placebo had a 22% chance of that happening. So that's a pretty big decrease from 22% down to 17%, about a 5% um, absolute decrease. Like in the evaporate trial, these people all were on um, statin therapy as well. In addition, importantly, in the reduce it trial, um, there was a decrease in overall mortality, which is pretty much the most important parameter there is since we all just would like to live longer and feel better. So for the people who got the VESEPA or EPA, there was a 6.7% chance of overall mortality versus 7.6% for the placebo group, so a decrease of almost 1%. This wasn't quite statistically significant, uh, but it was close. So the positives from these two studies of EPA only, two grams twice a day uh, in a background of people who were taking a statin, it shrank plaque 9% over two years. It turned out this was independent of the effect on triglycerides, making you wonder if the treatment would work for people who had a normal triglyceride level. And um, the chance of heart attack, stroke, etc., decreased by almost 5% over five years. And then lastly, the overall mortality decreased by about 1% over five years. Some negatives here. The trials included a statin, so it's unknown what result uh, would be without a statin. So for people like me and many people out there who can't tolerate statins, you wonder, if uh, it was just EPA only, um, how that would fare. The placebo used in these trials was mineral oil, and um, that can decrease the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins, which um, probably isn't a good thing, and it makes you wonder if the benefits seen were actually just harms uh, caused by the mineral oil in the placebo group. There were a couple of side effects from the VASEPA. Um, atrial fibrillation was increased by about 1% compared to the placebo group, and um, bleeding with slightly increased fish oil um, can affect clotting some. A uh, really big negative here is that the VASEPA is super expensive, um, costs a ton. And, um, you know, if you were to go to your friendly neighborhood online uh, drugstore, uh, I often recommend Blink Health. I don't get any money from them. But anyway, um, okay, VASEPA, we'll put that in there. Oh, everyday low price. Yeah, you got it. 350 bucks a month, uh, and not many people are going to pay that or anywhere near it. The insurance companies, they hate VASEPA. Um, these studies, of course, were paid for by the pharmaceutical company, so conflict of interest is always there, um, Ameren Pharmaceuticals. And you know what? Um, let's think about it. That's four grams of fish oil a day, um, 1,500 kind of biggish capsules. That's a lot of fish oil. So the upshot of all this is that for people with vascular disease and triglycerides that are elevated more than 150, VASEPA is probably a good idea. And um, if the person can't afford that, then EPA-only fish oil um, seems like a reasonable choice. This is uh, a product I researched a little bit. Again, I don't get anything from this company. And this seemed similar to VASEPA. This is uh, EPA only fish oil. And uh, the dose per capsule is 500 milligrams. So basically, um, the dose of this that would be similar to VASEPA would be um, four capsules twice a day. And while it's not cheap, it's a lot less than 350 bucks a month. Of course, making the assumption that it uh, has a similar effect to the highly processed uh, um, icosapen ethyl that's used in VASEPA. And I don't want to say that it's the same grade as a pharmaceutical product. Um, the regulations are a lot less. Um, you wonder about impurities um, and something that's a supplement, but... Um, the cost of VESEP is just so much, it's not really realistic for most people. So, you know, it, it, it kind of makes sense to look for an alternative. So what's the upshot of all this? Well, for my patients with vascular disease, that's atherosclerosis of the carotids, the coronary arteries, 
any artery, uh, basically, um, and elevated triglycerides, I'm recommending Vesepa. I'll try to get that for them, but usually that doesn't work out. I've only got a couple of patients who've been able to afford it. Um, and if people can't afford it, then I end up recommending an EPA only supplement. So stay tuned for fish oil too, which I'll be making shortly. Uh, I'll go in a little more depth about uh, what type of fish oil to choose and, uh, and why. Um, do me a solid and hit the like and subscribe button if you like this video and uh, share it if you think it could be useful for somebody else. See you next time.